I'm sorry, Ben. No, not, one not at all. That's fine. I'm aware of I can hear the watch ticking from <laughs> here, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be really quick. Um, so my, I'm Ben Dempsey. Mm. I'm from um, Save the Children. Um, uh, I'm also working um, on uh, the initiative, the Humanitarian and Leadership Academy, which is um, an initiative that's been started within Save the Children, but it's very much a cross-sector, cross-agency initiative at the moment uh, on uh, humanitarian capacity strengthening and, and leadership. Um, so it's, it's great to be here for this discussion. Um, I, I'm due to speak about why leadership is so important in humanitarian crises. Um, the first thing that I'll, just to, just to highlight, which I think everyone in here will probably know, is that it's been officially, repeatedly identified as possibly the most important thing in a humanitarian response. Um, the NGOs and Humanitarian Reform Project, which uh, existed a few years ago, um, through a number of studies identified it as probably the, the single most important quality as to determining whether a humanitarian response is, is successful or not. Um, Ditto in, in Haiti, um, as John Holmes uh, at the time uh, was, was identifying, the need to deploy senior leaders to ensure that the, the effective management of the response in Haiti was, was identified as one of the reasons why things didn't go as well as they might have done, uh, done there. Um, uh, why that's particularly needed and, and, in, and what is particularly needed uh, about that leadership, um, I think that it's... I mean, it, some of this is stating the obvious, but humanitarian crises are extremely chaotic environments. They're extremely complex environments, and they're extremely contradictory environments in many ways. And a leader, a strong leader, those who are successful, uh, have the ability to cut through some of that and adapt to, to the particular situation. So there are some aspects that are always going to be constant and, and others which are going to be very particular to the particular response. So there will be multiple stakeholders, multiple competing interests, there are complex bureaucracies, um, and, and it's highly politicised, but there are contradictions in the sense of both a, a highly political environment on the one hand, whilst also trying to run a theoretically impartial humanitarian response on the other. Uh, there's a contradiction about the fact that it's often highly structured, certainly in UN terms, the, the humanitarian architecture is very structured, um, but, but yet the, the context is extremely chaotic yeah. and in many ways unstructured, uh, and, and civil society action within a humanitarian response is often much less structured, and trying to balance those two things up and, and make the most of all of that is, is a significant importance. Um, I think that it's increasingly important as well, given the way in which humanitarian context and landscape is changing. Um, it's becoming increasingly complex and increasingly diverse. Um, more um, diverse humanitarian actors, increasing uh, role of uh, emerging economies, increasing um, control being taken by many governments uh, who might otherwise not have, have wanted to take or not been able or willing to take as much control um, as, uh, as, they, as they do now. Um, a proliferation of, of small and medium-sized um, crises in relation to, um, to climate change and, and population growth and urbanisation. Um, I think an, one particular model of humanitarianism that's being strongly developed at the moment is in the ASEAN region, a much stronger regional uh, and, and national governmental-based humanitarian system. The, the, the need to be a flexible and adaptive leader in that context and not stick with the previous modes of leadership uh, of the humanitarian architecture is, is absolutely vital. Um, so just to, to, um, to, to round off, um, this ability to deal with complexity and uncertainty in an increasingly diverse and unpredictable environment is needed at many levels. I think that the, the days of top-down leadership uh, are numbered um, and increasingly both difficult and, in and inappropriate. Um, leadership is required at all different levels, um, both within organisations but also different sized organisations. Local and national organisations are playing an increasingly important role. They have always have done, but I think it's increasingly recognised. There needs to be strong leadership there as well as at the most senior levels at humanitarian coordinator and so on. So, um, sorry, I, uh, that's rather a rapid run-through, but those I'm are my thoughts. I'm very sorry about it. <laughs> Not at all. You will feel the benefit <laughs> later, as they used to tell me.